century egg, and pork congee. This creamy rice porridge is a Cantonese dim sum classic and one of the easier congees to whip up. Now, you might have heard about century egg from like one of those bizarre food shock videos, but don't be intimidated, it's a great ingredient. Century egg. I know it got a reputation, but what it is is a night marinated and alkaline mixture for a few months. And now you have this rich and creamy and delicious ingredient, and you can just eat it directly too. Of course, the most important thing in a kanji is how you handle the rice. This is a half cup gently rinsed jasmine rice, and to that we're adding a teaspoon of oil and a half teaspoon of salt. This is to help the rice break up better while cooking, which will make for a creamier kanji. So just leave that to marinate for 20 minutes. The cut of meat that we're using here is called shangu, or the pork hip bone. This is a great cut for this because it has a nice combination of lean and bone. If you can't find this, just use a couple bone-in pork chops instead. We're blanching the pork in simmering water for three minutes just to lighten up the flavor a bit and get the so-called shan wei out. After three minutes, just take it out, rinse it thoroughly, and set it aside. Now we can start the kanji. We're using the standard ratio of 20 parts water to one part rice, so 10 cups boiling water in total here. Add in that blanched pork, your marinated rice, and of course, one whole century egg. That century egg is gonna add a lot of richness to the dish, which means unlike most great Cantonese kanjis, we don't have to work from a stock paste to make this tasty. Bring that up to a boil, then down to a heavy simmer. What we're looking for is a heavy enough simmer that the rice will gently circulate around the pot. As the rice moves, it's gonna repeatedly hit the side of the pot and break down the grain. The amylopectin from the rice will then dissolve into the soup, giving it the creamy consistency that we want. So as a side note, this is why those rice cooker prepared kanjis are generally so damn disappointing. The rice cooker's heat's far too low to circulate the rice, resulting in nothing but a bunch of soggy rice and some sad-looking starch water. So if you want a good kanji, opt for the stove. Now the kanji is real easy to overflow, so a little trick is to elevate the lid by putting down two chopsticks and placing the lid on top. This kanji is going to cook for one hour, stirring every 10 minutes or so. This is what our kanji was looking like about a half hour in. As you can see, the soup's getting thick and the rice is starting to lose its structural integrity. We're well on our way to a creamy kanji here. Just be sure to remember to stir. And another half hour later, our kanji is done. Now season that kanji with a half tablespoon salt, about a teaspoon of chicken bouillon or MSG, and about a half teaspoon of white pepper powder. Mix that in, being real careful because this stuff's basically like rice lava at this point. Take out your pork and your century egg. Shred your pork and be sure to scrape out all that tender meat off the bone. The century egg will just cut into little pieces, toss that all back into the kanji, and pour into your serving bowl of choice. To garnish, we're slicing up a whole raw century egg into eight pieces and laying it over the kanji to make everything all pretty. Just sprinkle with some green onion and the kanji is ready to serve. This is a real simple dim sum classic. I hope you give this a try. Check out the rather link in the description box for detailed recipe and subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.